found this apartment online and just hoped for the best. And it has been a very nice apartment, but you know, there's always some downsides. And one of them is, my channel, my name is Amanda. Today I wanted to show you my apartment here in San Francisco. I am moving, so this is my last couple of nights in this apartment and I'm about to start packing up everything after I film this video, but before, I sort of wanted to show you what it's like living in San Francisco, what you get for how much you pay, sort of what you can expect if you're heading out here. So you can see this is the main space of my apartment. I have some nice windows here, um, but they're not super great because they kind of face someone else. I'll show you in a bit, but it's, uh, it's not huge, but it's good for me. It's not great if you want to entertain or anything, but there's a lot of things I love about this apartment and the size is just not really um, the best part of it, but there's other great things. But speaking about the size, um, I can almost touch my couch and my kitchen at the same time. Kind of like open concept, you know, people love the open concept right now. This is a little too opened or closed in tight, really, because you don't really wanna like look that close at your kitchen all the time, you know? You kinda wanna have a little bit of space to feel like you're in your living room or feel like you're in your kitchen and not kind of in both at the same time. But space is a premium in the city and it's hard to find a lot of it, especially if you're on a budget. So this apartment right here cost me $2,200 a month, which depending on where you live may sound insane. It's about 300 square feet. It's in Knob Hill in San Francisco. But if you're in the Bay Area or in San Francisco specifically, or if you're looking in San Francisco, $2,200 a month is a steal. And it's a steal for this apartment, which has pretty upgraded kitchen and appliances and cabinetry that I really love, but it's still expensive. It's expensive to live in the Bay Area. And so I'm paying $2,200 right now, but I looked up what this apartment is likely to be going for once I leave it. And I believe that's going to be closer to 2,800 because I took a look at our website and there's a couple apartments available right now. And the cheapest is like 2,795 or in that range. So this was a pretty good deal and it was rent controlled. So it was very hard to give up for that reason. There are a lot of rent controlled units in San Francisco. So if you're looking to come here, that's something you might be getting. So that's a pretty awesome benefit, but things are more expensive right now. I moved here in March of 2021. So it was kind of in the middle of COVID. I purchased this apartment or leased this apartment in February of 2021. So no one knew it was happening. Everything was still very much shut down here in the city. So I also got, I believe, a month and a half of free rent, like $3,000 towards free rent. So that was pretty awesome too. There were a lot of deals at the time. You're not seeing as much of that anymore. So if you're moving to San Francisco right now in 2022, 2023, don't expect to get 2,200 and really consider this apartment that you're looking at right now about 2,800 because I think that's about what it's going to go for. I might check when it's listed and put that in the description of what it actually ended up being listed as, but right now it's not on there. So I don't have an exact price. Well, they show you a little bit around the apartment. So this here is the kitchen. Um, this refrigerator, I believe might've been new when I moved in. There still looks like there's some plastic on it um, that I never took off just because I didn't realize it was that new. And I actually put up this Thursday night football magnet like two days ago. It's my first magnet and I've lived here like 19 months and I put it on like a week before I left. So that'll be coming off real fast, but I figured why not throw it on. But I think this was new. It was super clean on the inside. So that was awesome. And a lot of these buildings in the city are older. So you don't really see as much, you, you may have to, anticipate seeing older appliances, but there are a lot that have been upgraded like this one here, this whole building is, there's always doing upgrades and construction. So you might be able to find something nice and upgraded, but these are older buildings. 
just keep that in mind. I do love the cabinets here. I love the white and I like these handles on them. I'm moving to a new place that doesn't have something quite as nice as this and I'm a little bit sad about that. It's not quite as updated of a kitchen, but there are places in San Francisco with fairly reasonable rent where you could find pretty upgraded things. Did not come with the microwave. My new place does. So some places do, some places don't. If you need to buy a microwave, they're pretty cheap. The problem with this microwave though, is it takes up a lot of space on the counter and there is not a lot of counter space. This is a one bedroom apartment. Like I said, 300 square feet. So I'm only one person that has to use this space, which makes it a little bit better because if there were multiple people trying to use this kitchen, especially at once, it'd be pretty tight. But overall, very nice kitchen in my opinion. I like it. Um, here's some of the things I was talking about. Looks like there was some, there's some plastic still here on the, uh, on this refrigerator. So I think that it was pretty new and uh, just never was taken off and just me opening and closing it all the time. Ended up ripping the plastic a little bit, but it was new and that's pretty cool. Here's the oven. It's a full size oven. You got four burners. That's pretty nice. I like this. I was pretty happy with the kitchen setup. Not quite how happy with how close it is to my living room, but overall happy with it. And I have a dishwasher. It's kind of a tiny dishwasher. I don't know if you can see from this shot here, but that's a small dishwasher. I've never seen like a three quarters dishwasher like that, but somewhere like San Francisco where space is tight, that's a pretty awesome thing to have. And the sink is actually fairly big, which is nice because that could have been a smaller sink, but it might've gotten more counter space. Overall though, really like this kitchen. Think it's pretty good for the money I'm spending here. But because I am tight on space, I have these awesome windows, but I've had to use them in some ways for space. There's no real place to put utensils in that kitchen. If you see, there's no like drawers. There's no drawers, that's not a drawer. That's just nothing. So I had some of my utensils here. I had to get creative. It works. Um, and this has kind of become like a little junk drawer because I can't have a junk drawer because there's not drawers. It works. Um, but it kind of takes up this window space and makes it less use for other things. Also what sucks about this window space is it is very, very close to my neighbors. It looked like beautiful windows when I I, so I got this apartment sight unseen. I'd never even been to San Francisco, just showed up. I found this apartment online and just hoped for the best. And it has been a very nice apartment, but you know, there's always some downsides. And one of them is it's hard to keep these windows open because look how close those people across the way are to me. You see their blinds are closed and mine are usually closed too because you can just like see everything. No one lived there when I first moved here. That was an empty apartment and you could see straight into it. I could see when they brought people in for tours and stuff. And once someone moved in there, they closed their blinds. And now I pretty much close my blinds because it's just a little, little too close for comfort. Um, but it's nice to have the big windows. It does let a little bit of light in because we're in between two buildings. It's not super bright here. So it could be more light if you were, you know, facing a street which is kind of unfortunate. And I think there's like, this noise seems to carry through here. So you do hear a little bit. It might be better though than being on, against the street for noise, I'm not sure. And that's a picture of Carson, who's also right here. Does not come with the apartment. Does not come with the apartment. <laughs> He's coming with me when I move to the East Bay. But another thing over here is the toaster, because again, there's just not a ton of counter space over here. So having a toaster, really wasn't an option, or at least putting the toaster over there all the time. If I'm not using it, it's just kind of taking up space. Over here, we have the bedroom, just one bedroom, but a lot of apartments in the city are studios, so I was pretty happy to find a one bedroom at a reasonable price. And I was able to fit a whole queen size bed in here, which I was really excited about because a lot of the apartments I looked at only had room for fulls, and I personally prefer a queen size bed. So I was very happy about that, but not a lot of room on either side of it. So I have Carson's dog bed there. And then on the other side, I have his crate. And this box wasn't here most of the time. This is for my packing, which will get started right after I finish this video. There's Carson's crate. He doesn't use it most of the time. And here we have the closet, which is actually a decent size. You can see fit a lot of clothing in there. And there's some space on top where I keep his travel crate, 
and I have a little suitcase up there. So size of closet, not bad. So when you leave the bedroom, you go back into this living room area, the entrance to the apartment right here. And then across, we have this drawer that looks like another closet, but actually in here we have quite a few cool things. So that door leads to the bathroom, but we have a washer and dryer. And that's a pretty exciting thing in any city. I know it's hard to find New York City, hard to find here in San Francisco. A lot of places don't have a washer and dryer. They have a room you can go wash and dry your clothes and then you need to like pay for that. I like having the convenience of having it right in my apartment. So we got the washer here, the dryer here. It's a stackable, so it's not quite as big as the ones that sit on their own, but it saves space and I have it in unit, so. That was a pretty exciting thing. For me, the dishwasher was like, I could wash my dishes if I need to. I don't use a ton of dishes, but the washer and dryer with someone who works out a lot and has a lot of sweaty clothes I like to rewear um, and wash, this was a really exciting thing to have. So right beyond the washer and dryer, it is a little bit weird. You have to walk past the washer and dryer to use the restroom every time. There's only one restroom. You have the bathroom and it only has a shower, which, you know, that's all right. You don't need a bathtub. A lot of places are going away from bathtubs, but that was the only, only thing. It's kind of small. I don't know if you can tell, hold on. I'm gonna get in there. It's kind of a small shower. It does the job and I do like that it has this nice shower head and it's really high up, but it's kind of tight like when you're turning around and I am like, 5'4 and a smaller person. If you're a bigger person, like I have trouble sometimes when I'm hitting this door like I just did there and it's opening and then water starts coming out. So if you're somebody who's, I don't know, six feet tall and like a man and a little bit broader than me, you might have a little bit of trouble moving around in here, but it did the job and I really don't have a ton of complaints. It, I'm just trying to give you the reality of what it's like living with less space than if you're coming from somewhere suburban or a city that's a little less densely populated than this one where everything just has to be a little bit smaller so we can fit more people. So you have a nice mirror and that one you can open up. It's a medicine cabinet, so that's a bonus, but it is a pedestal sink. And I didn't realize that because that made it really difficult to like have anywhere to put like makeup when I get ready or like hair stuff. So I had to get this thing that I found at Bed Bath & Beyond just to put some stuff on so that when I needed things like in front of me and I couldn't fit them up on this tiny sink, I put them down here. You know, you find ways to work with the smaller space. I also got this thing over here to have some storage in here. It's a nice toilet. I mean, it does the job. It's normal size and everything. So that was a plus. And on the way out from the bathroom, we do have like a closet space here. So I added some storage in here, which is nice. And I've hung some coats, most of them that I don't wear because I came from places that were a little bit colder than the Bay Area. San Francisco is much colder than most people think, but it's not usually this cold. And back into the living room, I also put some more storage right here. I think I got this off of Amazon and it just some nice little drawers where I can just throw some random things in. So this has come in quite handy. This over here is kind of my all purpose table. So in a smaller space, you don't really have room for like a desk and a kitchen table. So this functions as both, but I, it's a really pretty table. I like it a lot and I'm excited to take it with me and use it in my new space. You can see just like, this is really nice wood. And this over here is basically the entirety of the living room right across from the kitchen I showed you earlier. And I also really love this couch. This is a really nice leather couch, I like the color of it. So another piece that was a little bit more expensive, but I think it just made the place look a little bit nicer. And you have, like I said, you have a small space. You don't have much you're gonna be able to put in it. Might as well put in a couple nice pieces as opposed to like a bunch of things that aren't just really nice. But I didn't decorate this place much. You can see on the walls behind me, nothing. I didn't have any sort of art or really decorations, just kind of the big things. I didn't know how long I was gonna be here and here I am leaving after 19 months. So it was definitely fun living in the city and experiencing this. For me, I just think 
a lot of lifestyle things about being over in the East Bay, being closer to my gym, being closer to the humans I care about. And I do have a car for work, like I need to drive as, for my job as a reporter. And being able to have reliable and safer parking are just, it's just a huge thing. It's going to make my life and my job so much easier. Oh, hi, this is my dog, Carson, if you're new here. He appears in a lot of my videos. Say hi to the vlog, Carson. No? Okay. He's, uh, he just wants attention. But, and I think it'll be nice for him too. There'll be more space for him to run around. There's a small dog park at my apartment building. There's also more dog parks just in the area that I can easily drive to and don't have to worry about parking being an issue. Like it has become such an issue here in the city. It's so hard for me to manage my car and my car is just sort of a necessity. If you're moving to San Francisco and your car isn't a necessity, get rid of it. It's not an ideal situation and it's super expensive to park inside of a parking structure and street parking is so hit and miss. So if you don't need a car, I would definitely suggest not having one in the city. And if you can walk to work, that's great. If you can walk to your gym or the other things you love to do, the city is a great place if you have all those things within your walking distance. It just didn't work out for me in that way, but I loved getting to live here while I did. And I do really like this apartment and was really happy living in the Knob Hill area. It is very residential though. So if you're thinking about Knob Hill, I like it a lot. Um, it is a little bit quieter and I do like that. But if you're big into nightlife and having a lot of that stuff really close walking distance and a lot of activities, this might be a little bit farther away from those things than what you're looking for. So just make sure you take a look around the neighborhood. Even if you can't come here in person, just like Google Maps it and see the things that you want and make sure they're within a good walking distance because public transportation in San Francisco is not as great as some other places. So you will have to Uber or take BART, which could take a while or Muni or any other option just takes a lot of time. And if you don't like walking a lot, I don't mind walking personally. So I walk a mile, mile and a half, to get to a lot of the things I like to do. Um, but if that's not for you, then you might want to look at a neighborhood that has all the things you want for the most part right there, including your job. If you actually go into the office and aren't a remote worker. Anyway, I appreciate you coming by and watching this video by the time you see this, I will be out of San Francisco and in, in my new apartment, the two of us together. So it's a little bittersweet thinking about that because I do think this is a really nice apartment. I tried to be realistic and explain to you what isn't ideal here, but for $2,200, but actually probably $2,800 if you were to look at an apartment like this one today, I think it's a pretty good deal. I like it. It's very upgraded. Good lighting. It's pretty bright in here. I was really happy with it for the time that I was here. Anyway, if you want to see more of my fitness vlog, lifestyle reporting content, make sure you subscribe. I appreciate you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one because this guy wants pets now. Bye.